welcome back to the channel. Once again, my name is Ed Zamora from Principia Prep. And today we're going to be discussing planning out your college transfer to make yourself stand out from the crowd. Now, if you're new to the channel and you're looking for additional college content, please hit the subscription button down below. It will notify you of new videos coming out, as well as hit the like button if you enjoy today's content. It does help the channel. That being said, let's jump right into planning out your transfer to stand out from everyone else. Now, hindsight is obviously 2020. Now, for some of you probably watching this video questioning what happened with your admissions applications. Why did we get rejected right off the bat? Was it the classes our student took, or the SAT scores, or the ACT scores, or not taking the test again, or going SAT optional? Did we do something wrong during the interview? Was it wrong due to do the interview? Or maybe we should have went with the off-the-wall essay topic we're thinking about. Maybe we didn't visit enough. First thing to realize is this is all irrelevant, by the way. You cannot change the past. What matters now is coming up with a game plan if that dream school cannot get out of your head, and that's where you want to go. Now, as we begin this video, let me just state that this was the hardest academic year from an admissions point of view in history. The amount of applications that came in were astronomical. Now, this is unfortunately a fact that's great and also bad. Good because of the sense that you did probably get into many colleges, meaning that you did beat out a lot of people. Obviously bad because possibly you were rejected from the one school you wanted to go to. And the one thing I tell almost every family I deal with once they've gotten rejected is you can be upset, you can be disheveled, you can be mad, whatever you want to call it. You can go out running, you can scream, you know, have coffee and vent with your friend, whatever you need to get it out of your system, essentially. But for me, I tell everyone the same thing. You have essentially 48 hours to do so. Then after the 48 hours is up, we need to come up with a game plan. Also, you have to realize, okay, they rejected you. A lot of students get rejected, so especially at the top end schools. At the top end schools, nine out of 10 students typically get rejected. So the reality is a lot of qualified students are not getting into top tier schools. All that being said, if you still can't get the school out of your mind, this is where you want to end up, this is where you want to go, let's start talking about building that game plan. So now the first thing you have to do is choose a secondary school. This school should be a place that obviously offers your major and or offers the same course load you would be taking at your dream school to make sure you don't lose any time. That's the first thing we need to do, find the secondary option. Second thing we want to do is contact the admissions office and find out who the transfer rep is. The interesting thing is that at most colleges, most colleges only have one or in some cases two transfer reps that handles all the transfers coming in. And your goal is to build a relationship with that person. You want to build a relationship with this person because you want to have them on your side. You want to make it excruciatingly difficult for them to say no to you when your application comes back in again as a transfer student. So this begins by you figuring out who that person is and asking to speak with them, basically setting up a meeting, whether it's face-to-face, one-on-one, whether it's a Zoom, whether it's a call, whether it's an email, you want to find a way to get connected to that person. That's your goal here. You want to let them know that you weren't admitted this year, but you appreciate the opportunity for them looking over your application, and you'd love to do a transfer in a semester, a year, two years, etc. And you want to start building knowledge from that person. You want to get information from them. Things such as you want to find out what GPAs they typically look for from a transfer student, how many credits that they typically look for before they highly consider a transfer student. Will they look at you after one semester? Will they look at you after one year? Will they wait for a year and a half, two years? How long do they typically like to see and how many credits do you like to see from a transfer student coming in? Number three, how important is community service, volunteer work, leadership programs, so on and so forth? Remember, this person's evaluating your application. You're getting the straight answer from the person looking at your application here. Also, number four, do you evaluate our high school situation? Do you look at my class of taking in high school, my GPA, my SAT, ACTs? Are those still part of the requirements for you guys for an applicant or transfer student? And how highly weighted are these different things? Remember, this is the person looking at everything. They're the ones who've been doing this for a pretty long amount of time. This is the key person to get the direct answers of what you need to be doing to enhance your application. Now, by doing this, you're essentially achieving two goals here. Number one, you're establishing the relationship. You're starting to build a relationship with that individual to get them on your side. And number two, you're gathering vital information to help your application stand out from the group. With this, you now have a game plan to start putting together your transfer. Now, after you have your discussion, make sure to send that person an email thanking them for taking the time, answering your questions, letting them know that you can't wait to you know, apply later on, and would it be possible to ask them questions in the future? They're always gonna say yes, by the way. Then you wanna keep to help your calls the dialogue going. This could be an email informing them that you first have grades come in and you have straight A's, or you got a leadership award, 
or you've done a lot more community service in a group that that university also has there that you can't wait to be a part of. You can even ask them, are you holding any transfer student open houses? Is there any other information you know about about this program at the college? Or I heard that you have this scholarship for transfer students. How is it accomplished? What can I do to get it? So on and so forth. Now remember, all your emails, your phone calls, your Zoom meetings, whatever it is with this person, all of them have to add value. And this is what I mean by add value. Those things add value I talked about. Asking them about specific programs, asking them about scholarship stuff, letting them know about your grades, letting them know about the courses you're taking, double checking with them if the, the courses you're taking are good or not. Things that do not add value are just emailing them, asking them how they're doing, emailing them or, or giving them a phone call and asking how's the weather there kind of scenario. These things are not going to add value. You're, you're basically just annoying them. Your goal here is to increase your chances of getting in. To do so, it's very simple. Let's build a relationship with this individual and let them know by our interactions with them that we're looking to add more knowledge so we can, number one, get in, and number two, make sure this is the right place for us. That's what you're doing here. By doing that, you're building that relationship. You're also, in a sense, building your knowledge to get yourself ahead of your peers by knowing exactly what you need to do to get in here. These are the steps I would take for almost any transfer student looking to go to any school later on, especially if you guys didn't get into the school you wanted to off the top end. There's always another way in, by the way. It just depends on whether you're willing to do what it takes to get in, in most cases, good, bad, or indifferent. That being said, thank you for watching today's video. Once again, my name is Ed Zamora from Principia Prep. If you do like the video, please subscribe. We do provide new we do add new videos almost weekly now. I'm adding a lot more videos every week now. As well as if you're interested in our newsletter, on the screen is our email. Just send us an email letting us know what grade level your student is in, and we'll send you out the monthly newsletter. And once again, we are establishing a scholarship fund here. The more videos you guys watch, the more you comment, the more you like the videos, the more videos, the longer you watch them with the commercials, the better it is for our opportunity to provide scholarship funding in the near future. That being said, thank you once again for watching. My name is Ed Zamora from Principia Prep.